He's an American rapper, record producer, and entrepreneur. He's the founder of Aftermath Entertainment and Beats Electronics. He produced albums for and oversaw the careers of many rappers, including Snoop Dogg, 50 Cent, and Eminem. He's Dr. Dre, and here are his top 10 rules for success. The secret to my longevity, I think, is the fact that I'm a perfectionist, you know, and I listen to everybody's shit, you know. I mean, even R&B, <clears throat> I listen to classical music sometimes, I listen to heavy metal, I just listen to everything, you know. And really, I listen to the, to the whack shit more, you know, because I want to know what not to do, you know, the stuff that's not selling, you know. Um, it's easy to pick up a hit record <laughs> and know what people are buying. First of all, you have to make sure that this thing is for you and it's who you are and you're built for this, you know, and then you have to give it the passion that's necessary. You know, like I said, I don't do it for the money. The money is going to come. I do it because of the love that I have for it. You know what I'm saying? If I was a plumber or something like that, I still would make hip hop records. That's how much love I have for it. You know, I feel like right now I've been in the game close to 27 years. And I've actually thought about this just recently. Out of the entire 27, my 27 year career, there's only been two weeks that I've been out of the studio. There's, mm. I've never been out of the studio longer than two weeks in my entire career. That's how much love I have for this thing that I do. So that's the thing, just the passion that you have for it and really, really put your all into it and make sure that your word is the last word. That way, you don't, you, know, you don't play the blame game or anything like that. If it comes out hot, it's on you. If it doesn't come out hot, it's on you. You know what I'm saying? That's all it is to it. The craziest part about this revolution that we started is mm. this album, Straight Outta Compton, was only done in six weeks, five days a week studio time. You know what I mean? Wow. At three hours a day. You know, so it was crazy how this happened. And it just let me know how powerful I could be. I'm like, damn. If people are buying this, wait till I really get a chance to get in the studio on some real equipment with some real time. What I think has to change for people, um, as far as um, longevity, is list looking at people that have made it in the business. You know, Quincy Jones, people like that. That's that's my mentor right there because he's been he started at a young age, the same as I did, and he's still doing his thing and having fun with it. You know, it ain't about who has the flyest car, who has the most jewelry, you know, it ain't about that. It's about saving and preparing yourself for when your shit ain't happening no more, you know, because it's going to happen sooner or later, you know, you just, you, you never know when, you know, when Dr. Dre falls off, if, if and when that happens, I'm cool. I'll never have to touch another button as long as I live straight up. I'm cool, you know, and that's what, that's what you have to think. You have to say, okay. I know I'm going to fuck off some money, so let me put this money over here to fuck off, right? And let me save this. Let me save this. Take care of your taxes. Take care of all that shit. You got to make sure you're prepared when the shit gets thick. What did you hear in Eminem that made Dr. Dre, who we know from N.W.A., Dr. Dre we know from Compton, you know what I'm saying? Dr. Dre that we know from The Chronic. What made you hear something in Eminem where you say, man, it's this Caucasian rapper out of Detroit. Well, first I of all, I, I didn't something. know he was Caucasian right, when I heard we. it. You yeah, know what I'm man. saying? When I heard it the first time, um, I just loved the delivery. I love his concepts and mm -hmm. what he was talking about because it was just crazy. You know what I mean? Um, I found out a couple of days later that he was a white cat. You know what I mean? Right. So then I'm like, wow, I, I, I got to meet him. I got to meet him. You know, this is amazing. And everybody around me at that time were trying to talk, was trying to talk me out, out of, of working it? with him. You know what I mean? Man. Every single person around me was like, "Listen, man, this is a white boy. You're getting ready to ruin your career right when we get the right when we get the label started because that was at the beginning of aftermath." You know right, what I mean? Right, 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 right. Yeah. So um, I just had to go with my gut. Man. I'm like, he's that hot. People are people are gonna get into it because it's that good. I don't ever feel the responsibility um, to impress people with with my music. I do feel like I gotta get in and do do um, my music to the best of my ability, you know? And I feel like I'm my worst critic, you know? If, if I'm not digging it, it ain't the shit, you know? So um, the critics out there can basically like kiss my ass straight up because they know nothing about what goes into this. They're just people with a nine to five behind a typewriter and a CD player listening to it and critiquing it. You know, you can't criticize 
something that somebody's working real hard on because that can like shatter their whole shit, you know it might be a hit record in them you know that's why like shit i'll be seeing in the source magazine and them critiquing records and you know nobody can critique my shit unless you've done half of the stuff that i've accomplished you know what i'm saying nobody can critique this shit, you know there's nothing saying that i'm gonna make a, a and smash every time I go in the studio. That's what I set out to do, but like I said before, you don't know what the public is gonna dig. So all the critics just need to shut the f up until they do or try to do the sh that they're criticizing. What's your process before we get to hear a track? You know, it's um it's not the same thing every time. It really depends on who I'm working with. I try to get inside of the head of the artist I'm working with, and the record has to be them. I don't go approach an artist and say, okay, this is, what, this is the way I think your record should be. I just try to, to make what they're bringing better and just add whatever they're bringing, add my thing to whatever they're bringing. So I just try to get, into, get in touch with the artist, try to get in touch with their personality and what they're trying to do, and try to just take that to, you know, to levels unheard of, you know. That's real so, talk. That's, that's just my thing. I just, it's, it's no set foundation or no set way of doing it. I think people are limited um, because they're very well influenced by people that's around them or people that's in the media, you know? You see somebody criticizing something, you're not gonna do that. You know what I'm saying? I don't think like that. I'm only gonna do what I like, straight up. And a lot of people have tunnel vision like you may see people talking about how um, if they get a lot of money or something like that, they're going to stay in the ghetto, they're going to stay in the projects. That means if you're staying there, you're going to allow your mother and your family to stay there also. And that's bullshit, straight up, you know. The, the change has to happen somewhere in your, somewhere in your generation. You know, um, for my family, I'm saving money and I want my kids to start on another level. I don't want them to start in the projects. No, that means they have to build for their families. If they start at a, at a higher level, you know, their families are gonna get better. That means your generation down the line, they're gonna have a foundation, you know, and I'm gonna set the foundation straight up. You gotta have your eyes on the prize, you know what I'm saying? Let me tell you something, man, ain't nothing on this planet I can't do. You know what I'm saying? Real. That's how I feel. And that's why I'm gonna stay at the level I am, you know what I'm saying? On top of everybody, if not the one of the best producers in the world, period. Just know your business and know what you're getting into before you get into it, straight up, because this is a doggy dog world, straight up. <laughs> the record business. Thank you so much for watching. I made this video because a lot of you guys were asking for Dr. Dre. So if there's a famous entrepreneur that you want me to profile next, leave it in the comments below and I'll see what I can do. I'd also love to know which of Dr. Dre's top 10 rules meant the most to you. Let me know, leave it in the comments. I'm gonna join the discussion. Thank you so much for watching. Continue to believe and I'll see you soon.